Welcome to 1111 Downtown Fort Worth. It is so good to have you with us this morning. So glad you chose to, to uh, sit in. Hope you've got a cup of coffee there or, or a cold juice of some sort and just uh, sitting in and relaxing. We're going to have a wonderful time of music and stories and, um, and some improv and then also a, 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 an amazing piece that uh, Brad Thompson has put together for the end of our time together. Uh, Sean Robarts is with us. I'm also here with my wife this morning and we're going to continue our conversations, Reverend Lynn McDermott and myself, on this idea of our pandemic, post-pandemic selves. Just what are we going to be when we come out of all of this? We're not going to be the same, but how are we going to be different? And then finally, we have a guest with us this morning, Elizabeth Wills, one of our favorite local singer-songwriters, and she's coming up in just a minute to offer something. On Thursday, we have, Thursday evening, we're hosting a live Zoom improv concert with Chuck Shandliver and actor Jakey Cabe and Wynn LaRue in New York. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you're going to be there live with us, so uh, you'll get to contribute to add things and suggest things that they can then make stuff up in response to. So that's going to be fun. Um, look for the information on our church website. Also look at the 1111 Downtown Facebook page. There'll be information there as well and in the emails. So I think it's Thursday 730, but I don't remember the exact time. But it is Thursday evening, so be on the lookout for that. Hope you can join us with that. Um, finally, please make sure that you're registering your attendance. There's some buttons to the side, uh, also an opportunity for online giving, which we appreciate so much as the ministries of the church continue, but it really helps us to know that you're there and that you're watching and that this is working and making connections. So if you're watching, please just note your registration there. If you're on Facebook Live, know where to register, but you can at least say hello in the comments section so that we know you're there. It's so nice to be able to know who's watching and who's connecting, and we really appreciate that. Look forward to the time when we can connect in person again, when that may be. But for now, it's good to be here with you and to have this chance to share in music and story and improv and ideas. Good to have you with us. We'll see you in just a minute. Good morning, everybody, and happy Mother's Day. <clears throat> Living on the outside, looking in. Feel like a window, you know I break sometimes, just like a window. Love is just a liquid, and it's flowing like a river. I've been reaching for this ocean, and I break before I see the waves. So why don't? You show me ways to save my soul. Show me ways to save my soul. I got a hole in my pocket where it all slips away. Oh, show me ways to save my soul. Show me ways to save my soul. I got a hole in my pocket where it all slips away. Where's my head been? Took a spare, sipping it all my thoughts. I have my life been a place. Living on the outside, and I am looking in. I can't get it together. Won't you show me ways? Come on and show me ways to save my soul. Show me ways to save my soul. I got a hole in my where it all slips away. Oh, and I'm show me ways to save my soul. Show me ways to save my soul. I got a hole in my pocket where it all slips away. Come 
Thank you, Elizabeth. It was really beautiful. Um, I thought I'd just start us off right off the bat with a story. Okay. Okay. So this art, this archer is a master archer. He's the, the, the finest archer in all the land, and he's making his way down the road and comes to a hedgerow, tall bushes, and he sees beyond there a bunch of trees. And what catches his attention is here are trees with targets and arrows, dead center bullseye in every one of them. Just close, far, different distances every one of them a bullseye. And he's thinking to himself, I didn't shoot these. Somebody is going to be my perfect match for competition here. And then so he's finally a challenge worthy of his talent. And he looks around the edge of the bushes and what does he see up against a barn not too far in the distance, but as a small child, just a young, a young boy. And he's pulling arrows out of his quiver and he puts them in the string as he gets this arrow set and the, and the, the archer stops him and says, wait a minute. How is this possible? You shot all these arrows? And the boy says, oh, yeah, that was me. I did that. <laughs> yeah. He said, no, you did That's impossible. I've been studying all my life. How did you do that? He said, oh, it's easy. He said, I take the arrow out. I put it in the string. I pull back the, the bow string as hard as I can, and I let the arrow fly. And then I, wherever it lands, I run up, and I draw a circle around it. <laughs> bullseye every time. Bullseye every that's time. That's the way to get a bullseye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll make sense as we get into it. Hey, I didn't say hello to you. I'm back. I didn't say hello to you. Uh, welcome again to being with us at 1111 Downtown. And this is my wife, Reverend Linda McDermott. I'm Reverend Tom McDermott. And we are continuing our conversation of your post, I mean, your pandemic, post-pandemic mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. uh, who are we going to be mm -hmm. after this is all over with? Who are we becoming, if anything? Um, and so today we're going to continue that discussion. If you didn't register your attendance, please be sure and do that. Please sign in. If you didn't go to Fa if you're on Facebook Live, please give us a comment so if we you know you're there. Just comment, we know you're there. Yeah. Otherwise, it's we don't so think nice anyone's out there. That's right. Please. We're not sure anyone's there. Mm -hmm. So please sign in and let us know you're there. So um, <laughs> we were going to continue this conversation, and I said last week we're going to get down and dirty with resurrection. Yeah, why'd you say that? Uh, because I didn't know what we were going to be doing. <laughs> Sometimes you just speak without. Thinking. Sometimes I just draw, now, I just land the arrow, and then I draw a circle around yeah, it. Yeah, okay. There's the connection. Well, okay, good. <laughs> so, good one. Um, good one. we're going to talk about shalom and its connection with resurrection, uh, because okay. there's there's a relationship there. Okay. And um, so I want you just to jump right into it to give us sort of an an overarching idea of what shalom is in the Bible. Yeah, because you and I were talking, and it's amazing how shalom is the primary theme in the entire biblical narrative so you have the story of the garden of eden at the beginning and you have shalom in perfection that is lost and and, and we and shalom is of course peace wholeness peace yes. unity yeah. all things working together for good then you have the end of the story the the revelation of john hmm. and you have these images that go back to eden and the tree, the river, all of it's back there, but it's like, it's like shalom regained. And so we have shalom lost, shalom regained, and in between we have this story of how this unfolds and that we're invited to be a part of it. And so the major theme in the Bible, there are a lot of themes, but the yeah. major theme, the most consistent theme is this notion of shalom. So, I mean, just some of the scriptures that come to mind would be what we started our series with when Jesus, after his resurrection, appears before the disciples, remember, and he says yeah. Yeah. one word, 
So the resurrection, the first words in the resurrected life begin with the word shalom. Well, and, but some of the words right before his, his, his execution, um, when he goes to Jerusalem for that last week, oh, what's he yeah. say outside? Jerusalem well, as he's looking down. That's he profound. Cries. That is a beautiful scene. Jesus is looking over Jerusalem and he begins to weep. And he said, oh, Jerusalem, that I could gather you like a mother hen mm -hmm. because you do not know the ways of Shalom. Shortest verse in the Bible. People make that joke all the time. Oh, Jesus that was wept. another place. Was that? Oh, that was another place. That was okay. maybe another okay. place. Never mind then. But he does weep there and that's profound. because they don't know how, he, they still don't know the ways of it's peace. It's broken. And then right before he dies, he tells, he's, talking about his upcoming death and he says to his disciples he bequeaths to them peace i leave to you my own peace i give to you hmm. shalom is my gift to you yeah and so then after his resurrection first appearance first words out of this resurrected narrative are shalom shalom wholeness balance mm -hmm. peace mm -hmm. and then where else he says this the letters of Paul. Oh, the we, letters of Paul. We yeah. hear it. He starts Paul. every single letter with grace and peace to you from, I think, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, most of them start that way and, or it, in that way. And, it's like a reminder to them, hey, regardless of what's going on in your particular church, remember this. Because our grounding is shalom. Because these are broken communities. Yeah. Our the, grounding is in shalom. Is in shalom. And then we do it, huh, this was what I thought was fun, is we do it whenever we pass the peace, but we don't think about it. Whenever we pass the peace at, at church, peace, you know, it's go from like a distance. It's kind of how it's are high you? high five, mm -hmm. fist bump, shake hands, one day we'll, we'll touch again. <laughs> but, and, and I love that. It's important that we hug and that we have connection. And it's good to be with friends, but that's not really what shalom is. When we say peace to you. We, when we say peace of Christ, we are saying like, hey, don't forget why we're here. And don't forget who you are. And don't who forget I who am. we are. We this are is what we invest our life this. in. That's right. This it, is the investment of our life. The kingdom of God is about wholeness, peace, inclusion, justice, justice. Right? What'd your brother tell you? Oh well, you know, in in building terms, when you justify a wall or two walls, you you're putting them in right relation. And so I love that justice and wholeness is being in right relation. Right. Okay. So, so, shalom is kind of the trajectory. Absolutely. It is the purpose of God's kingdom in Absolutely. the world. Right relationship with Absolutely. self, others. That's what we plug into. Itself. That's what we invest. That's how we risk our lives. We put it right there. So this idea of resurrection, then, if we talk about resurrection, we have to first of all recognize what it isn't. Uh, what it's, isn't it? Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not what it's not resuscitation right no, well i mean we think yeah, of it that way we, we're bringing a dead body back to life well and sometimes that's what we kind of do let's just bring back what we used to have right let's just get back to the but way you know things what were. nobody recognized jesus when he came back oh so yeah there was a difference something yeah changed. and we already know we can't get back to the way things were in so many areas but but there's something else then about resurrection which is about bringing something new, experiencing something new to life that is even more profound than what was old. Yeah. And so resurrection isn't about resuscitation. It's about a path. It's an ongoing thing. And I'm, I'm thinking right now that one way that I'd love to sort of transition us into thinking about how we make that happen is um, to sing a song. Okay. So I'm going to sing a quick song here. You can't play the game you can knock out the part Well, you know it wasn't written for you Tell me how can you stand there with your broken heart Ashamed of playing the fool No one thing can lead to another It doesn't take any sacrifice Oh, father and mother, sister and brother if it feels nice, don't think twice You just shower the people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna be just fine If you only will What I'd like to say to you is Shower the people 
people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna be much better If you only will You can run but you cannot hide This is widely known What you plan to do with your foolish pride When you're all by yourself all alone once you tell somebody the way that you feel You can feel it beginning to ease I think it's true what they say about the squeaky wheels Always getting the grease It's better to shower the people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna be just fine if you only will What I'd like to say to you is shower the people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna be much better if you only will That was nice. Thank you. Yeah, it's one of my favorite songs. Yeah, good old James you know, Taylor. JT. So, um, the reason I wanted to do that song is because we're talking about shalom, mm -hmm. which is this wholeness and balance. And we're also talking about resurrection, which is kind of, well, do you remember at the very beginning, I said this, I made this statement that we kind of summarize where all of this goes, where all this is leading. It was at the very beginning of the series. And I said, God is love, and love is the organizing force of the universe. Its most profound expression is kindness, or care, and which we talked about as investing ourselves into life and mm -hmm. taking interest in life, one another, ourselves, taking interest. And then its most enduring exp experience, I said, was or is resurrection, is new life. Okay. I'll so say that again. God is love, and love is the organizing force of the universe. Its most profound expression is care to care, mm -hmm. and its most enduring experience is resurrection. Okay. Um, talk a little bit more about this um, place of resurrection in the, in the investment toward shalom. Right. To uh, if shalom is balance and harmony and wholeness, so um, how does resurrection participate in that? So you're asking me how we get there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So, I mean, because we're in a time of pandemic, it's like, go ahead, go live a resurrected life. No, I'm in despair. Mm. No, I've lost my job. No, I'm just, it's, I'm miserable. I get that, right? Yeah. We know that. There's pain, there's suffering, it's hard, there's, there's anxiety, we don't know about the future, and I've read how many companies have um, filed for bankruptcy mm -hmm. this week. Yeah, I have a friend who's, sorry to interrupt, um, she, she'll name all those things and, and the way she talks about it is just hopelessness. She's, she's really in a deep state of despair and it's not that I disagree with her. I mean, she's right about all the things she names and yet despair goes no place. It right. just shuts it down. It shuts and it so down. even though those are truths, I need a better response. I got two words for that. Okay. Two words. Solve this problem. Yes and. It, yes I and. I know, I've heard that before. Yeah, right yes now. and. I mean, it's basic improv 101. But okay. as we got to talking about this this last week, I mean, I've taken improv off and on, and, and, and it's. I found how much it opens us up and opens me up. It releases me from my anxieties of have tos and shoulds and it just frees me to participate in the moment. But it takes practice and this yes and is one of the most basic concepts. It's it's saying yes to the moment but not just saying because the moment's perfect. It's saying and this. Okay. So in its most simplest form it would be like um, I, I say something and you say yes and in terms of the practice <clears throat> and you would say yes and and then add to something because that moves it along whereas yes but everything's going to hell in a handbasket right you, that shuts it down 
right? There's, yeah, there's, there's no there's more there's conversation. No use for despair, and I understand how we get there. Um, yeah, but yeah. yes and challenges us to add to it. Moves it forward. Even if we have to fake it till we make it kind exactly, of thing. So sure. let's try this. I'm just gonna we're gonna have a little game here. Yikes. Are you and, gonna make um, me do improv? I'm gonna make you do improv. I have never done live improv. on the internet. <laughs> I I've never done it's, improv. So um so here we I'll say something and then you say yes and okay. okay. So um how about we um how about we go to the movies tonight? Yes, and I I would enjoy uh, something without a lot of violence in it. Yes, and um, if there is some violence in it, then perhaps I could persuade you with some popcorn. Yes, and uh, I'm going to need a soft drink to go with that. Yes, and I'll make sure it's an extra large. <laughs> oh, yes, and I'm going to have to limit myself with an extra large because I don't need that much sugar. Yes, and I agree. No, I don't agree <laughs> that you don't need that much sugar. <laughs> so I shut it down. <laughs> it takes so much. So I could have said, like, yes, and I'll make sure it's a diet drink. Or I could have yeah, I could said, take that the wrong way yes, too. and I'll make sure that we have some other options. Yeah. You know? None of, okay. So I l essentially shut it down, which happens so often. It's I saw this easy, other wonderful thing where I said... I wanted to go. I don't even want to go to a movie. I was in a routine with somebody, and, and they said, um, I have this gun pointed at you. And they looked back at me and said, um, that's the gun I gave you for our wedding present. <laughs> and then I said, we're not married. <laughs> And, it, <laughs> and it's like, scene, scene, <laughs> shut it down. Yeah. I mean, the thing about yes and is that it requires... It's so easy, though. It's so easy. It's just to two words. That. You don't have to learn a lot of... It, it is easy to say no because we say no all the time. All the time. We say no to, um, you know, our kids. Why would you want that degree? That degree is not going to get you anywhere in life. We well, say... it's the caution. We don't want to do something wrong, so we look at all... The cautionary things first. How much first. fear and anxiety mm. is at the root mm. of our nose when in reality the ground of our being says life is a resurrected life. Okay. Love is at the ground of our being. When we participate in that love, when we participate and take interest in life, okay. we are saying yes and. It's not the final answer, but it's such a challenge to be able to go there. Um, well, it... You, you mentioned... I mean, uh, walls and barriers. It, it really it demands that you... Oh, politically, we say no all the time. Our politics are always saying no because it's all about our the extension of our own anxieties and our own fears, oftentimes. But when we talk about this time that we're in, I mean, you were telling me about this friend of yours. Oh, um, yeah. He's, he's on hospice. It's, his, it's kind of his last couple of weeks, really, in reality, and yet... He, he's he got a beautiful attitude about it. He's been very inspiring. And, um, you know, I mean, you've you've worked with a lot of cancer patients, yeah. Um, yeah. especially children right. at the camps yeah. that you've done over the years. And Yeah, and one of the things I've, all, I've often experienced in that kind of setting is this sense in which they say, they say yes and. They've discovered mm -hmm. that the story is larger, is always larger. Just as you said about the biblical narrative, the larger story is always about finding shalom. Mm -hmm. But every we get shut down all the time. We shut ourselves down all the time to that larger story. But something in, in these kids and in adults I've experienced, it, 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 they open up. It's like they've taken the chance to, it's a leap of faith. They leap into the vulnerability yeah. to move the story forward in the moment they're given, as opposed to saying, that's it. That's the yeah. end. I, I have a friend. You know what? I, well, let me, go, if yeah. I can, you know, each one of our kids got to go to these cancer camps with Tom on occasion. And what I, what they would say when I'd come home, I'd say, well, how was it? You know, was it different than a kind of camp? And to a person, they would say, these kids just put everything into it. Right. They just, they were like so full of just... Um, adventure and they said yes to everything. The, the kid that Matthew uh, met once, it was a teenager, 16, and he had a prosthetic right leg and it was a titanium <laughs> yeah. leg. And he would. Uh, Wait a minute. 
They were going to have a baseball game. They yeah. didn't have a bat. And the kid said, yes, and I have a titanium leg. That's right. He said, yes, <laughs> and use my leg. Yeah, they and, did. And that that's was exactly horrible. what they did until one of the counselors <laughs> finally went and got. And he ran, you know, he hopped uh, his way to first base. That wasn't the point. It wasn't the point to try to get him out. The point was to try to live the life they had at the moment. Absolutely. So they all laughed and just yeah. enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. that's saying yes and okay. um, my friend uh, Gene Kyle Smith, you remember him? And, and it's been years. Been ago. years ago, and, and he passed away. Had can- uh, bone cancer, I believe, bone marrow cancer. And one of the things that he said to me once, because he was a musician and he tried to do a lot of different artistic things, and eh, so so, you know, he just never really flourished. But he was always joyful, even in the latter months of, of his life. He just mm-hmm. always remained joyful in relationship. He remained well, intentionally he in relationship. invested in his life. He invested in others, too. And others. Yeah. yeah. And I remember him telling me this story. I'll just abbreviate it really quickly, but it was an old Zen tale, because I asked him, I mean, how do you do that? I mean, how is it you stay on top of this like that? And he said, you know, there was once this old Zen man who lived up in a mountain by himself in a little hut. And he would always wake up in the morning and look out on the valley below, and he'd see the village below, and he'd see all of the people, and he'd just smile to himself, the trees, the, the, the hillsides, and he'd say, all of this is mine. It's, I see it's all mine. And one night he was awakened by a thief who broke into his hut and took everything, which was nothing. He had very little, but he took everything mm-hmm. that he could and still wanted more. And the old, the old man said, I can give you the this coat off my back it's the nicest thing i have and he gave him the coat and you know, the thief storms down into the into the tree line and disappears and just then the old man notices something he looks off to his left and he says he kind of shouts after the thief but he's long gone now but he says if you'd only stayed long enough i could have offered you this new view of this beautiful moon oh. And I looked at, at Gene for a while, for a moment, and I just kind of, I, I wasn't registering at first, but then he just smiled, and I thought, okay, yes, and, mm-hmm. that's, yeah, this is happening, mm-hmm. yeah, acceptance, but at the same time, it's not the full story. The bigger right. story is shalom. Oh, yeah. The bigger story is resurrection. You know, uh, can I, that's where resurrection is in that arc of, of the whole biblical narrative is is toward shalom resurrection is the yes and that's right yes there's death yes there's evil yes there is there are forces that seem insurmountable and yeah new and- life this little this uh, remember the old testament image of the the shoot that grows out of this dead stump new life can come out of Hopelessness. You know, I was reminded once uh, when flying with somebody, and we were in, the, in this jet up above the clouds, and this woman looked at me and she smiled and she says, you know why I love to come up here? And I said, I, I, why? And she said, because it reminds me, the sun is always shining. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. and I thought that's true. It's, it's your perspective. It's your isn't perspective. It? The mm-hmm. sun is always there. The clouds come. The sun is still there. God is with us that that's the name of jesus that's always that's really what shalom is about Mm -hmm. the very ground of our being is love love is the organizing force it's always there luring pushing cajoling us right toward wholeness of being not just as individuals but as a whole global and it's not denying the reality of pain because it's that pain is there, and we're having a hard time, a yeah. lot of us. Yeah. But what it is saying is try yes and. and, and it's, yeah, it's not denying. It's not saying, look on the bright side. Right. But it's just saying underneath the pain is something bigger. That, yeah, and, and we, I want to wrap it up here. I know we've, we've, gone, we've taken some time here, but I want to wrap it up with this idea that the good news of the gospel mm-hmm. is, is not so much what God does then. It's not what God does. Mm-hmm. And this is this is different, difficult sometimes because you mean like a puppeteer because we want to think happen. of ourselves as victims and God's fixing. Resurrection isn't about fixing something. Resurrection is what happens as we participate in life and uh, love. Yeah, and oh, we are okay. empowered because the ground of our being is love. But we have to take the leap of vulnerability into that void and say yes and. And that's hard. So we lean on others to try to help us too. 
like this. <laughs> but but we don't forget that we are empowered by the very love of God. We the very are ground that is be God is not what our it, essence. It's not what God does. It's what God. Is. is God is love. You can't kill that. That's the resurrection. You can't control it. You can't pretend it. You can play the part. You can act out the part. But it's you can only live out what's written for you when you participate in it. I don't know if that ringing is telling us it's time to go. <laughs> it's not an alarm, but it could be. So faith is the willingness to leap into the void of vulnerability to see if it's true. And on the other side of that, the and the of and, God. The and of God. Caring for the other, caring for the stranger, leaping into the unknown, letting go of our expectations of how mm-hmm. things have mm-hmm. to be. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the challenge. We lost our job. Yes, and I have more time for reading. <laughs> yes, and I can call a friend and ask for some assistance. Yes, and I can think about new ways of being in the world. Yes, and I can reach out. Yes, and I can draw and explore. I mean, there's so many yes, ands. Mm -hmm. It's like what you plant in the soil of love, what you the seeds that you plant in the in in this of love. They have to be planted. So the key is, or the takeouts, or you know, shalom is the overarching theme of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Resurrection is the validation of that theme. It's the yes and of God that the reality is this and yet and we can. It's the most beautiful experience Mm -hmm. of the organizing force of love. Mm -hmm. Despair and death does not have the last word. It doesn't. There's an and. and There's an and. And to act on that Mm -hmm. is a true act of faith. And it's and it it works. <laughs> that's how that's how the world works. That's shalom. Well, I I think we've summed up enough. I hope so. I know we could keep on going with this and and improv got so many wonderful ideas. Yeah. If you haven't explored it, there's just so much that I think of as spiritual practice in practicing. Are we going to talk more about that? Um, maybe in the coming weeks we'll talk a little more about improv. Okay. There is an improv show coming up on the Thursday of this next week. Watch your emails for that. Oh, Check yeah. out the church website. Some of our members who are improv actors are yeah, going to do yeah. kind of a, a live Zoom show where you get to contribute to that. And um, That'll be fun. So I hope you can be it's a part be of fun. that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So good to see you and good to be with you. And shalom. Shalom. So. Holy One, as we continue our collective wandering and wandering through the crisis that consumes so much of our reality, and sometimes as we feel malaise or despair, may we be surprised again and again by a resurrected spirit of hope and joy that keeps us going and that clears a path for us to contribute to all the good that we can. May those opportunities fill us with purpose. And while we're away from our regular routines and the plans that we have made and that have slipped away, may we not be entombed by wishes for that which cannot be. May we rise up and lift others with us, or may they rise up and lift us up, whatever it takes. Amen. Says you're free to choose the egg on your feet.